Hi everyone, and welcome to CPC's online devotional for Tuesday, December 8. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that your week is off to a good start. At this point now, we are into the second week of Advent, and uh, throughout the season of Advent, on our Tuesday, Thursday devotionals, I'm sharing uh, brief devotions from Richard Rohr's little book, Preparing for Christmas. Today's reading from Richard Rohr is based on these words from the Gospel of John. As you know, John does not uh, share the traditional uh, Christmas story of Mary and Joseph and Bethlehem and the manger and so forth, but John does have a very unique opening prologue. So I want to read to you just the first vi five verses of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Those are the words we want to uh, reflect on with Richard Rohr. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Here's what Rohr says. The darkness will never totally go away. I've worked long enough in ministry to know that darkness isn't going to disappear, but that, as John's Gospel says, the light shines on inside of darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. We must all hope and work to eliminate darkness, especially in many of the great social issues of our time. We wish world hunger could be eliminated. We wish we could stop wasting the Earth's resources on armaments. We wish we could stop killing people from womb to tomb. But at a certain point, we have to surrender to the fact that the darkness has always been here and the only real question is how to receive the light and spread the light. That is not capitulation any more than the cross was capitulation. It is real transformation into the absolutely unique character and program of the risen Christ. What we need to do is recognize what is, in fact, darkness, and then learn how to live in creative and courageous relationship to it. In other words, don't name darkness light. Don't name darkness good, which is the seduction that has happened to many of our people on both left and right. They have not been taught wisdom or discernment for the most part. The most common way to release our inner tension is to cease calling darkness darkness and to pretend it is passable light. Another way to release your inner tension is to stand angrily, obsessively against it, but then you become a mirror image of it. Everyone can usually see this, but you. Our Christian wisdom is to name the darkness as darkness, and name the light as light, and to learn how to live and work in the light so that the darkness does not overcome us. If we have a pie in the sky, everything is beautiful attitude, we are in fact going to be trapped by the darkness because we are not seeing clearly enough to separate the wheat from the chaff. Conversely, if we can only see the darkness and forget the more foundational light, we will be destroyed by our own negativity and fanaticism, or we will naively think we are apart from the darkness. Instead, we must wait and work with hope inside of the darkness while never doubting the light that God always is and that we are too. That is the path of God into the world, through the darkness and into an ever greater light.
Let's close our time now with a prayer from our Presbyterian Book of Common Worship. Please pray with me. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, creator of light and darkness. In this season of Advent, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of the night, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory, made flesh and visible to us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for his reign of peace. Through the outpouring of your Spirit, you give sight to our souls that we may see your glory in the presence of Christ. Strengthen us where we are weak. Support us in our efforts to do your will. And free our tongues to sing your praise. For to you all honor and blessing are due, now and forever. Amen. God's grace and peace to each of you uh, as we continue through this week, as we continue through this uh, wonderful season of Advent. I uh, hope to uh, see you again online uh, for our Thursday devotional. Until then, goodbye.